My name is Kalila Reynolds. I'm the CEO of Money Media Limited, formerly Kalila Reynolds Media. And we're on a mission to make business and finance easy to understand and also to help Caribbean people create and maintain personal wealth and to help our economies grow and prosper for future generations. Now, some of you may have seen me on social media. Anybody? A few people saw me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. And you may have been wondering, why is this extremely beautiful woman <laughs> always talking about money? Money this, money that. Every minute it's let's get this money. I've named all my companies and projects after money. We have Money Media. We have Money Mission. We now have money mentorship, and we have so many other things surrounding money. Why? Why am I apparently obsessed with money? Well, it is because money is relatable. Everybody can relate to money, right? More so than if I say business or finance or investments. But if I ask you, do you want money, what would you say? Most of you say yes. And the ones of you who did not say yes amongst the audience, you're actually thinking it, you know. Those of you who say, but I don't really need a lot of money. I just want to be comfortable. How many people can relate to that? I just want, you just want to be comfortable. Say yes. You just want to be comfortable. But let me ask you, what does it take for you to be comfortable? What does it take for you to be comfortable? You're probably going to say, okay, I want a nice house in a secure neighborhood, right? You want to be safe. You're probably going to say, I want a reliable car that can take me to and from work and transport my children safely. You're probably going to say, you want to be comfortable or safe in the event that something happens to you medically or your family, you're taken care of. You might say that to be comfortable, you want a little time to relax. You want to have some fun. Can't be all work and no play. It makes Jack a dull boy. So you want to be able to take your family on vacation. But guess what? All of that takes what? Money. So in order to be comfortable, you still need money. And in today's environment and today's economy, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Those things that I just listed, healthcare, education, house, car, land, vacation. Those things take a lot of money. And generally speaking, you might even say that it takes wealth to be comfortable. It takes wealth for you to be able to say that I don't have to worry about money. You kind of have to be wealthy in order to not have to think about money in order to not have to go to work every single day, in order to be able to take off time to go to your child's school play and not worry about the repercussions from missing that day of work, not worry about your boss calling you, asking you where is the project. It takes a level of wealth to be comfortable. And so I encourage you in this room not to think of wealth as something that is evil or bad or unattainable, think of wealth as something to aspire to. For noble reasons, just for yourself and for the benefit of your family, there is nothing wrong with wanting to be wealthy. There is nothing wrong with wanting money. Agreed? Are we good? All right, I'll tell you a story. When I was growing up, my parents told me that in order to be successful in life, all I needed to do was go to school, get a good job, save, and buy a house. Sound familiar? I hear a lot of people saying, mm hmm, mm hmm, it sounds very familiar. Cause my dad was all about study a book. Study every time I tried to play, study your book. Why are you watching that show? Study your book. And I studied. I studied very hard, I did very well in school, got a scholarship to go abroad and study. I got two degrees, bachelor's, master's, came back home, got my dream job. And I was working in radio and television 
for many years, and I saved. I saved diligently. But guess what? All of that did not equal the house. And for some reason, I found myself in my mid-30s unable to realize my parents' definition of success, which was ultimately buy a house and you're set for life. The Caribbean dream. I'm originally from Belize. I live in Jamaica now. It's the Belizean dream. It's the Jamaican dream. It's the American dream. It's the Lucian dream. Everybody thinks that buying a house equals success. It's one of our goals, right? Having a nice property with a nice yard. And I found myself at 35 years old not being able to realize that dream, even though I had done all the things that they told me would make me successful. And I had won awards, award-winning journalist, financial journalist of the year, and this and that, all the accolades on my resume. But I was a professional success and a financial failure. Anybody can relate to that? At some point in your life, say, hmm. Mm. I was a professional success, but a financial failure. At least that's the way I felt. Maybe it wasn't true, maybe I was being too hard on myself, but that's the way I felt at the time because I couldn't achieve the dream and the classic definition of success. Not realizing at the time that the economic circumstances of our parents' generation we're miles apart from the economic conditions of today. First of all, my mother got married at 19. My grandmother got married at 17. I got married at 32. Many of my friends now in our early 40s still aren't married. And so our parents' generation had a lot more time to combine resources with their spouses, which we who are delaying something like marriage don't necessarily have, unless we combine with each other. Secondly, most of our parents had a pension plan. You work, you get your pension, right? It is very rare now in the private sector to get a pension. So most of us are working and working and working towards nothing at the end, unless we make those investment decisions now on our own behalf. And third of all, wages, salaries, have not increased at the same pace that property prices have increased. So our pay went from here to here, but then the house prices went from here to here. And so it takes a much bigger percentage of our salaries today to afford the mortgage that our parents could afford in their 20s. And so when I started to realize all of these things, I realized what maybe I'm not a financial failure. Maybe it is that the circumstances have just changed, but we have not changed the formula. And so maybe it is time to use a different formula. But what is that formula? Who is going to teach it to us? Because we in the middle class were never given any sort of financial education beyond what our parents passed down to us. And so it is our responsibility to teach it, teach it to ourselves. So what did I do? I said, well, Kalila, you're smart. You can figure this out. You're a journalist a well-known journalist, you have access to some of the brightest and the most successful people in the entire Caribbean. Why don't you ask them how they got wealthy? And I started observing them. I started interviewing some of the wealthiest and most successful people in the Caribbean. And I observed three things that they all had in common. One, I got your attention now, right? One, they were all investing in stocks and bonds. Two, they were all property owners. 
And three, most of them were successful business people. They were entrepreneurs. And when you think of the wealthy people in St. Lucia now, who comes to mind? Is it people who own certain businesses? You might think that person is rich. That person is rich. The owner of so-and-so is rich or wealthy, right? So I surmised that the three keys to wealth creation were investing in stocks and bonds, real estate, and entrepreneurship. But I know my friend here, who is it? Yes, you're Catholic, right? I saw it in your bio. <laughs> so you're familiar with the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Anybody else here is Catholic? Father, Son, and the Holy... So you know it's three gods, but it's really one God, right? It's three gods in one. It's a miracle. So I have my Holy Trinity of wealth. So we have real estate. We have, what's the second one? Stocks and bonds. And what's the third one? Entrepreneurship. But it's really just one. What do all of these things have in common? Anybody? Money? <laughs> Anything else? What do they have in common? What's that? Assets? Investments? What they have in common is ownership. Ownership. I have my holy trinity of wealth. So we have real estate. We have, what's the second one? Stocks and bonds. And what's the third one? Entrepreneurship. But it's really just one. What do all of these things have in common? Anybody? Money? <laughs> Anything else? What do they have in common? What's that? Assets, investments, what they have in common is ownership. Ownership. So all three things, the one true key to wealth creation is ownership. Ownership of assets, not just anything. I own the shoes, it's not making me wealthy. Ownership of assets that are going to appreciate in value over time. So the stocks and the bonds, you own them. Real estate, you own it. Businesses, you own your business, right? So investing in these things that are going to appreciate in value over time is the true key to wealth creation. So I said, okay, now that I've figured it out and I've gotten the keys from these wealthy people, how do I execute? Well, I looked at real estate Obviously, that one was not available to me. That was my problem from the start. Because real estate requires a lot of money to start, or at the very least, access to money, right? So that one had a high barrier to entry. And we all know that from time was time, real estate and property and land has always been used as a measurement of wealth. But that one seemed unattainable. The second one was entrepreneurship. That one is gonna take all of your time. Anybody ever run a business? It takes all your time, does it not? And it may be many years before you even see a return. So that one also seemed somewhat unattainable at the time, because at the time I was working two jobs and I had kids, so no time for entrepreneurship or so I thought. But the third one, Stocks and bonds did not require a lot of time, and it did not require a lot of money, contrary to popular opinion, because most people think that in order to invest, you need to have a lot of money. You need to already be rich in order to invest. But I discovered that that was not true at all, that you can open an investment account with very little money. And here with this product, the BOSL Global Investment Fund, all you actually need is 200 US dollars to invest in this particular product. And that is attainable to most of you. You heard what Mr. Antoine said, how much did you spend on your VVIP box seats? Crickets, nobody will answer. <laughs> More than the 200 US, I'm sure. They're quite expensive. But $200 is attainable for most people. Now, some people 
might have to save a little bit longer than others. But most people within a reasonable amount of time can come up with a 200 US dollars to begin their investment journey. And for me, it was even less than that. So I made my first investment. And you would think that that is the end of the story. And I was very happy and ha ha, now I'm rich. And here I am in St. Lucia to tell you to be rich too. But no, my very first investment was a flop. A big old dirty stinking flop. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> so I dove into an investment opportunity. It was an IPO. Because in Jamaica at the time, IPOs were everything. Initial public offer. It's the first time a company lists on a stock exchange and it's exciting. And people were doing IPO flipping. And within two weeks, you earn 200% on your investment. And I heard IPO and I said, I'm in. Take my money. I did zero research. I just jumped in on the hype because I said, it's an IPO, it's hot, it must make money. And the thing flop, big time flop. So what did I do? I said, okay, I approached this all wrong. I did not do any research, I blame myself. I didn't even understand what the company was doing that was listing, I had no clue about it. I just gave them my money blindly. So I decided, rather than just sit on that L, to start doing some research, to learn about investments, because it wasn't enough to simply know that investment is a key to wealth creation. I had to know how to do it. But it seemed that you needed like an economics degree to understand <laughs> what was being reported on the business news. And when you turn on the news, Business is the part when you change the channel, you're like, okay, news done. I don't need to hear, this one went up two points and that one went up five points and something about the Dow and the NASDAQ and something, something else and some percentage and some red and some blue and bull and bear, what's that? But I decided to educate myself and to learn all these terms. Now the journalist in me, when I learn something, I have a natural compulsion to share. I want to tell the world. And I started learning all about stock market and investing. And I felt like I wanted to just go tell it on the mountain that this is how you make money. <laughs> and that's what I started to do on social media. And this is how my company Money Media was born. And within a year, I realized that there was such a thirst for this information among our people, our Caribbean people, that I had to leave my full-time comfortable radio job and run Money Media full-time. And now that was the second key to wealth creation. So now I was an entrepreneur and a stock market investor, as well as bonds and whatnot, which led eventually to the third key. And last year, my husband and I were finally able to buy our first house. Round of applause for that. This is my life story. We call it the manor, because <laughs> it has a big yard. Using the proceeds from some of our investments, what would have taken us so many years to achieve based on our earnings from our income alone, was condensed to a much smaller time period because we were able to earn a higher return based on the things that we had invested in. And this is why I go on social media every single day and encourage people to get started with investing. Because let me tell you something, you can never work your way to wealth can never work your way to wealth. This is why athletes and musicians and a lot of these people, as soon as the income stops coming in, you hear they're broke. And you wonder, how did they earn 10, 20 million US dollars over the course of their career, and within two years, they're broke? 
Same thing with the lottery winners. Lottery change, you ever watch lottery change my life? Within a couple of years after they're broke, they accumulated money, but they never invested that money. And so when the money stopped coming in, that was the end of it. The second thing is, you can never save your way to wealth. Huge misconception. Our parents made us believe that we could just save and we'd be okay. But guess what? Savings in St. Lucia pays about 2% interest rate. But inflation in St. Lucia last year was 4%. So the one, let's say you put aside $100 last year, you saved it. This year, with your 2% interest, your $100 is now worth $102, wow. But with inflation, something that cost $100 last year now costs $104. So now you're in the hole. Now you're negative. You thought you were doing something good by saving, which is good in itself, but it's not enough in today's economy. You can never work your way to wealth. You can never save your way to wealth. You have to. You have to learn the new rules for success in today's economy. You have to invest. You have to learn and implement the keys to wealth creation, which is why I am so pleased that BOSL is launching this product this evening, the Global Investment Fund, which makes investing, which makes investments accessible to ordinary people, to ordinary St. Lucians, people who thought that wealth was not within their reach. Now have an opportunity to invest in a product that can get them started on the journey towards wealth creation. And the best part about it is, it's a mutual fund. So it's pooled resources, and you don't have to do any thinking. So you don't have to be like me, going out and looking for an IPO, and having it flop, and that being my only investment, and all the eggs pooled in the one basket. Because the mutual fund, the fund managers, take all of that thought work out for you. They're going to decide, based on their expertise, what are the best investments for this fund, both locally, regionally, and globally, as the name suggests. So you don't have to be an expert on stocks and bonds and real estate because the Global Investment Fund is going to make those decisions for you. All you have to do is just sit down and collect. You make money in your sleep. You don't have to work for the money. Well, you might still have to work for the 200 to give to BOSL, but you make your money work for you. So as they have been saying over the past week, I've been seeing the campaigns all over the radio, the billboards, go beyond saving and make your money work for you. Thank you very much.